Hello and welcome to Champions of Quinn and I shall officially label this episode 1 because the first part was mainly a, a setup kind of thing. When we finished last episode we had uh, equipped our characters and we got the initial orders to go to Throttle Keep. We shall do that at some point. Uh, I just want to leave. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I am not 100% sure, but if I'm not mistaken, money actually has weight. So you don't want to run around with 10,000 steel pieces. No, no, no. No, no. Heavy. Heavy stuff. Uh, uh, the temple, that's where you can get cured of all sorts of nasties. Um, the bar, you can get... Uh, you can have a drink and hear some uh, random tavern tales. I uh, will soon drink some ale. You hear tavern tale 40 and you know what, I'm going to pop to Tavern Tale 40 and read it for you. If you just bear with me a minute I shall probably cut out these s pauses, but... Ah! We took ale, which is good, because Tavern Tale 40 says don't drink the beer. The bartender washes his feet in it. How nice! So. It was the right decision. We made a right decision by not drinking the beer. That's. What is your pleasure? Pleasure. We shall leave. That is our pleasure. Uh, hall is where you go to train. <coughs> by the way, you can exit the game, add characters, remove characters, change classes for knights. Because the knight starts as a knight of the crown. Uh, better make sure before I say anything. Yeah, knight of the crown, and then you can, when you reach level three, you can train up to knight of the sword, and when you reach level four, you can train up to <coughs> or change up to knight of the rose. Um, the experience requirements goes up dramatically when you change to the different uh, subsets of knights and in my opinion and this is in my opinion only I suppose I think the knight is a very expensive paladin you do get some nice bonuses you get a free uh, plate mill and all that stuff and knights have a chance to take control of NPC uh, allies in fights but the XP requirement compared to a similar level Paladin, uh, which uh, more or less can do roughly the same. Uh, it's it's too expensive. Um, for completeness, I will probably go to Knight of the Rose eventually, uh, but um, I will say straight up here now before we get any further into the game, when we reach the end of this game and we transfer characters to the next chapter I will be removing this character and I will be making a paladin instead. I think a paladin is a natural party leader and I don't care how tough knights are supposed to be and blah 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 blah. I am a paladin at heart and I will dismiss this character and make a paladin named exactly the same thing. So we will leave you are near an outpost. Do you enter? Hmm. Hmm. Do I enter? No, I don't. So now we can move around. As you top a rise, you spot a caravan on the attack. Draconians have already massacred. The men are now slaughtering the women and children. They pause when they see you, then rush to attack. A battle begins. And welcome to the battle interface of these types of games. 
These are my characters. I shall hover over them. My fighter thief. My knight. My ranger. There's no fancy icon that encompasses a bow and I want to distinguish him so you always know where he is because that's the purpose of having different looking characters so you can tell who's who. What's what? Anyway, I, I came up with this color combination. It's probably horrible but it works for me. This is my red robe mage. This is my cleric and this is my white robe mage. And the combat is turn based. So that's not what I meant to do. What I meant to do was aim and then if you select a next it will target the next closest whatever. It was altered later on in the uh, other chapters. Uh, I'm fairly sure from Death Knights of Quinn it will target the next enemy. You switch to manual targeting if you want to aim on your uh, fellow characters, but no mind. So basically, it's like previous target will always um, target enemies first. So there's only hmm, interesting. Never mind. Um, she can just, just stand here. When you don't want to do anything specifically in a turn, you have the option to guard, delay, quit. If you quit, you don't do anything that turn. If you delay, you delay your actions to everyone else has acted. And it is in the order of the um, characters that you delay them. So if you have your cleric, your fighter and your mage and you delay all three, they will come back in that order that you delayed them. Um, guard means that the person will stand in guard mode which means that anyone coming within melee range um, they will go gain an automatic attack on so um, I suppose I could actually um, just equip her staff sling why not don't tell me she can't use that she should be able to use it not with a shield indeed so let us aim previous a bass and target <laughs> missed what a surprise I'm fairly sure it's in guard mode so you know what let's just move up here and then done guard he can guard as well he can aim he should have a bigger chance to hit than my poor cleric Hooray, one point of damage. There's no reason to waste magic here. It had to be more than one. Come on. You just wait. I don't want to trigger their attacks. Oh, there's a badge over there as well. Yeah, well, let's split out the damage, shall we? Or not. Done, God. Done. Done, I said. God. Ow. Aim. Manual. Stop hitting my mage. At this level in the game, you will hear a lot of misses. So. I probably want that one close to my mage out of the way first. Well, not like that. What a nice sound. Aim. Manual. Seven damage, not bad. Stop hitting my mage, you booger. Items, items, items. You can ready your darts. They can throw up to three darts at a time, but it hasn't got a very long range. I I think I might just be within range of that one. They only get the extra attacks if they actually hit. So, um, the first art, if it misses, you miss with everything, apparently. Or something. Uh, I'm not inside the shield. Move. 
miss aim manual target aim manual will you please kill that bugger two damage naughty Aim, manual. Yeah, they like to run if they panic. And as you probably noticed, when they run you get an attack if they are in melee range. Okay, he's too far away, you know what? Okay, um, what about next? Thank you. Target, please kill him. You can't run through trees. <laughs> hmm, if I'm not mistaken, he has a bow as well. Indeed. You can always have arrows ready, but you cannot equip a longsword and a short bow at the same time for some strange reason, because you haven't got three arms. Will you please hit? Thank you. That should be it for this fight. You have to go through the different characters. In later versions it ends the battle when the battle is over. If you have a ranged weapon equipped, you cannot guard. You can only quit. Done. Quit. No, I do not wish to continue this battle. 108 experience points. Hurry. Take. Oh, hurry. Share. The caravan lies in waste before you. The air is filled with the sounds of wailing women and children. All of the draconians are slain save one who rips a book from a dead man's hands. He turns to you and mercilessly and merely laughs. Then he takes a step and disappears. One of the surviving women comes up. Brave warriors will you help us reach the outpost? All our menfolk have died. Do you help? Of course we do. Thank you for your help. And then we gain the experience. Hooray! This is one thing knights pay tithe to the church. And I think they pay more and more as um, you go up into different types of knights. But don't hold me to that. I not fully sure. I could probably read the manual, but I can't be bothered because I know the gist of these games. Where do you wish to go? Well, we can go to the Commandant and say if he has anything to say about this. You enter the office to the sounds of battle. Sir Carl drives, this, drives his sword through the Commandant, who collapses. The body then writhes and becomes a Sivak. Sir Carl murmurs, I was afraid of this. As you report, his face grows grey. This is much worse than we feared. We have a patrol in throttle. Caraman leads it. Find him. Tell him he is desperately needed here. The imposter has emptied this outpost of troops. I know you are inexperienced, but I have no one else to send. Hmm. Um, we need some poor fools to die. Well. These guys will do. So, um, I know it's simple, but you know what? You you don't want to um, take any chances. The fix option is an um, a quick way for you to heal. What it does in game terms is it anyone who can cast healing spells will use. Uh, all available spell slots to um, memorize healing spells and then cast them to heal the party and then re-memorize the spells they had before. Um, so 
using the fix option uh, fix option will take some game time which of course is relevant because of the fact that the moon cycles will change um, there's a few instances in this game which is timed to a certain point but um, there's nothing that's I mean you, you're never given a, a two hour or ten minute deadline uh, you might actually be in one location not entirely sure but uh, it's we are in such a hurry we are in such a hurry but we are not in such a hurry anyway kind of thing um, view just want to see hmm should I go in and check you know what I've uh, I'm just going to do it. I know it's probably going to be annoying for the recording of um, uh, for the video purposes, but I will go in and see. Not enough experience. Fine. Good. Not just yet. As you can see. What I was saying in the first episode or the introduction episode, if I just ignored this, he has two classes, so he has to gain double the amount of XP compared to normal uh, single class characters. Um, but thieves are gaining experience uh, very quickly. Um, and if I just leave this now and start going on to the next bit and start gaining experience, then there's a good chance he will reach um, the XP cap for um the rules concerning leveling so it is a good idea to um keep an eye on it so but before we do anything we are going to save and then we will train him and yes i know it's, this is probably uh, this could involve an edit or two because i will aim for maximum um hit points and it doesn't necessarily give you maximum hit points so so let us just leave it at that um, I'm not super concerned as long as he gets a uh, decent amount of health when he levels his fighter part um, when you have um, dual class or multi class characters that's not a dual class dual classes for humans only um, it will take your two different classes um, at level up and split the amount of hit points they gain in half um, fighters they get up to 1 to 10 hit points per level plus constitution bonus and rogues gain 1 to 6 per level plus constitution bonus but there's a rule that only fighters, paladins, which are not included in this game, but pa fighters, warriors, try again, uh, fighters, uh, rangers and knights will gain a uh, constitution bonus from more than 16 in constitution, but any other class will not. Any other class can uh, gain a maximum benefit from 16 constitution, which is 2 hit points per level bonus. So, as a rogue or thief he would get be eligible for 6 plus 2 which is 8 half of that is 4 so if he got 3 nearly max it's not going to be super relevant um, one or two hit points won't make a huge difference but you can um, be so lucky that you roll uh, one or two hit points and of course as you get further into the game the difficulty will increase and there's nothing worse than getting yourself killed because you got some unlucky rolls. Would I uh, recommend that people abuse the system of saving game and train their characters? See if they get enough hit points and if not exit game and reload? Oh yes, I would. I would, definitely. The the enemies will have fixed hit points. This is a low six fighter, he's got this month this many hit points. End of story. And um if you haven't got the necessary health, especially your weaker characters, they need whatever health they can get. It can be tiresome and cumbersome, but uh, for editing purposes, I can get rid of it relatively easily. So, we shall keep it as it is here. Um, 
something completely relevant, but you know what, I'm just going to save it as A actually. Um, the save games, the way I do them is um, A is main saves, which is when I know that I'm happy with what I've done so far. I will save on A. B is temporarily main save, so I'm somewhat happy about what I'm doing and not entirely unhappy, but just you know. And C and D will be um, when I'm out and about. So, um, or I might, if I do something um, stupid, I will probably put it at J or something, but never mind. Um, I've spent enough time here. So, So we shall leave again. And now we head towards Throttle. In case you can't see it, um, we are that yellow square over here. No, I do not wish to enter. I want to move. And it just occurred to me that there will be a fight when we enter Throttle Keep. So, um, another somewhat dull episode. I'm sorry, it will build up. Um, but as for now, thanks for watching, take care and bye bye.